गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग वेर एवर यू आर वेलकम टू द एट्थ एडिशन ऑफ अडोबी डेटा वर्ल्ड इट्स ट्रूली अमेजिंग टू सी हाउ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस हैज ग्रोन ओवर द इयर्स थैंक्स फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन थैंक यू वेरी मच वेरी फ्यू टेक्नोलॉजी हैज कैप्चर द इमेजिनेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो फास्ट एज द ए आई यू विल फाइंड एवरीबडी टॉकिंग अबाउट इट ऑलमोस्ट एवरीबडी हैज यूज इट इन सम फॉर्म और द अदर every few days uh, you will see some new innovation is coming out it is so rapid so let's look at some of those aspects wha- about the acceleration what is happening and why kind of uh, it is kind of rapidly uh, growing and also some of the impact it is bringing in so uh, till now ai was more about understanding the human behavior understanding the real world you must have seen the famous picture of training the ai that to understand the image of the cat right so it was all about that like making systems ai systems more intelligent to understand the human behavior now it has moved to creating it creating the future so it can create text images music videos source code and and what not it's truly amazing what is happening and what the possibilities are so let's look at what is happening why sudden rapid acceleration and like what all things have changed behind the scenes so one is the data set so you know ai systems need to be trained on the data sets and more it has kind of looked at different aspects of the data and more data the better it will be and the datas were not available so you can see that uh, earlier years 1980s and and so on the the amount of data available was far less but now in 2020s and round about you can see that all ai systems they are dealing with 1 trillion data set it's like huge amount of data uh, which is kind of getting consumed and uh, chat gpt flan a whole lot of technology they are named and and you can see that that space top right corner is so crowded and, and so many uh, technologies and and uh, ai systems are available which is consuming that kind of a data set uh, you must have heard about the moore's law it is about doubling the compute power every 2 years but that was true till 2012 post 2012 it is doubling every 3.4 months if it was growing at the rate what moors had predicted it would have grown after 2012 about 30x 30 times right but it has grown 300000 times so you, you can imagine the compute power which is available today and so data set large data set and the huge amount of compute power which is available and that has kind of accelerated the ai systems and what uh, it can do you must have heard about models so uh, training training the ai system so it can be trained to i i gave the example of a cat it can be trained to understand whether the image has a cat or not so that was just one model right it can train uh, it can be trained to kind of or uh, do a text summarization so you give a a, a pdf or a, a set of text it will summarize it so that was one model the text summarization model can't understand the image similarly uh, you you would train to do a, a credit card uh, fraud detection now a credit card fraud detection can't do text summarization the other is like cancer detection so that was like uh, uh, you give a, a data set for cancer detection and it can just do that nothing else uh, self driving car and other there are plenty of examples where the model can do just one per- specific thing but now uh, you can give the model everything uh, you can give text images speech it can just consume everything and then a single model uh, can do pretty much uh, with some adaptation uh, uh, all, all kind of things so question answer sentiment analysis all these were Uh, are different models earlier but now it is the same model uh, is doing everything uh 
you, you all, all of you must have kind of uh, interacted with chat gpt one uh, it, it can give you a question answer it can write poems for you it can write source code it, it, it can do plenty of things just one model it can do a text summarization you give it a set of text it will summarize it for you it can fix the grammar uh, the possibilities are endless what it can do so that is large language model uh, in the NLP world, which is a natural language processing, or otherwise foundation models in general. So, for example, for images also, uh, Firefly, that is Adobe's technology, there is a DALI, uh, Mid Journey, and so on, Chat uh, GPT 4, which is the newer uh, technology, uh, which is behind uh, Chat GPT, which is on GPT 3.5. So, your data, your compute, and then your foundation model. Uh, now, uh, a single model can do pretty much everything. Suddenly, whatever work was done with uh, 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 kind of a singleton models, those are kind of all waste. Now, this new foundation model is doing everything for you. Now, those large language models and other things I talked about that it is based on the huge data set. Now, you can see that number of parameters. So, it is about... Uh, if I have to explain what the parameters is. So let's say in a sentence, after a particular word, where all it can occur, uh, that possibilities, that list is, let's say that is the parameter, right? So now you can see that the computer systems are trained up to 540 billion parameters. So from one particular word, what will occur next? It knows all the possibilities, which is humanly impossible. Humans can't know all those things and, and that computer systems can do. And you can see that based on the number of parameters, more and more things it can do. And up to 540 billion, uh, it, it can do pretty much what the humans uh, can do and, and beyond. Uh, if I ask you, what is the number of parameters chat GPT has? Uh, answer is... 175 billion so you can imagine chat gpt with 175 billion parameters is doing so much and when any system which has uh, 540 billion parameters what all it can do but it is like computationally very expensive and so on so those are theoretical level at this point of time uh, not cannot be used in production but it will come it will it will time will come when uh, those are also uh, are quite viable now uh the AI systems have started becoming better than human in, in some uh, uh, kind of areas. I, I talked about the number of uh, parameters and what it can do. So visual reasoning is one of that. Human bench line, uh, human baseline is about 80-81%. Uh, and you can see that how AI systems have evolving and there is a data since 2016. And then in 2021-22, it has kind of overtaken the humans uh, how it can perform. So it is like at 84%. So here the example of who is wearing glasses, man uh, and woman, uh, the system uh, can quickly predict that and, and then give the answer. Right. So that is kind of what AI systems are capable of uh, today. This is another example, which is Adobe's foundation model uh, and Firefly. So uh, left side, you see those are stock images on which the system was trained on. And on the right hand side, you can see that those are generated images. And it looks pretty real, right? Whatever it was trained on uh, and uh, uh, some other uh, images, uh, it, it can kind of replicate that in a, in a pretty realistic sense. So that is what the AIs are capable of uh, today. Uh, we uh, trained on one artist's data uh, and then generated some of those images. And we reached out to that artist and showed them those generated images. He was stunned. He, he said that his, his response was, my creation would have been pretty much same. and It would have been uh, similar looking. So you can imagine what AIs are capable and what it can do. We conducted uh, a survey, uh, two surveys rather, uh, in uh, Feb, March. In AI world, that is pretty long back. Uh, but still, let me talk about it. Uh, so first was about 13,000 consumers and 4,000 marketing professionals across 14 countries. And second was for 1,000 creatives across US. So let me present some of the data points, not all, and some of the interesting ones. 
So 57% believe AI will improve their personal creativity. 90% of the professionals feel it will help them do the work better. 89% say it will help them create more and better content. Generating content faster ranked number one and optimizing content and generating more content tied at number two. Right. So that is what how people are looking at AI and how it can help them. So basically, it can help them do more uh, and faster. Right. Uh, on the Creative Pro side, uh, they are already using uh, generative AI quite a bit in their professional work. So you can see some of the numbers, 48% are using in uh, ChatGPT, 34% are using DALI, and so on. Out of all those uh, responded, 71% said that they will use it in their professional work and 59% say they will use it in their personal work. Personal work is still lagging behind a little bit, uh, but you can see that more and more uh, people are receptive to AI and, and what it can do for them. But there were concerns too. There are quite a bit of concerns around transparency, right? Uh, how the AI was or uh, the content is getting generated, right? What it was trained on. People want to know. So they want to know the transparency. They want to have the transparency. Uh, you must have heard about fake news and, and what harmful stuff uh, AI systems can do. So harmful and biased content was another concern. Hallucination. Uh, in AI world, if the computer is giving you a very wrong answer, a wrong answer very confidently, that is called hallucination. So you, don't, you can't figure out whether that was the right answer or wrong answer and whether to use it or not use it, right? So that is a big concern. For the creatives, it was content credentials, right? How the, you saw that image of the flowers and it was quite kind of uh, inspired by what was on the left-hand side and then AI system uh, can uh, replicate that. So the creatives are worried about that. Uh, respective creators' choice of control. So some of the creators want, they don't want their images or their creations to be used for by the AI systems to train, right? If, if they have not given permissions, they want their choices to be respected. So these are some of the concerns uh, which people raised uh, while kind of uh, in our survey. Okay, so uh, this is two depiction of before Gen AI and after Gen AI and what it can do. And partly it was uh, getting conveyed in the survey as well. So before Gen AI, uh, you had to spend more time on execution and you had less time of Im on imagination, for imagination. After Gen AI, uh, you can imagine more and because you have to spend less time on execution. So you have just kind of a think that what kind of stuff you want and, and quickly you can generate it, right? So thinking and imagining and, and what you want uh, you, you can spend more time on that. Same thing was true when the computers uh, came out in the initial days. I heard, uh, I, I read about one or two articles where people were saying, uh, especially about uh, their uh, spreadsheet and so on, they used to take something a uh, couple of weeks uh, using computer. Uh, it, it was like kind of a done in uh, maybe a few minutes or, or max one hour. So same thing is happening now. It is like a second level of that revolution uh, where uh, you, you can do much more using the Gen AI and its power. So this is one example. Uh, many of you would have seen that. Uh, this is uh, Adobe Photoshop.
truly amazing, isn't it? Many of these things were possible earlier also, you could do it. But now it's all about text prompt. You just say what you want and, and it's there. It, it's so quick. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I wish you uh, a great data world next three days. There are a lot of great sessions. Uh, enjoy and, and uh, hopefully you will have a, a, a great takeaway at the end of it. Uh, we also have a session coming up today, what Adobe is doing in AM guides using Gen AI or AI in general. Right? So Divraj Singh has a session later today. So uh, just make sure you attend that. And that I didn't want to steal his thunder, so I have not covered that here. So thank you very much. And once again, have a great Twitter world. Thank you.